Hello, hello everyone and good afternoon. Yeah, kamusta tayo? Kamusta kayo lahat? Uh, it's a uh, uh, relatively good uh, Sunday afternoon yeah, dito sa amin, at least dito sa Paranaque. And I hope you're doing well. Uh, usually, Sabado tayo nag-live stream. Well, Sabado tayo nag-live stream for the past few weeks. But today, may ginawa kasi ako kahapon eh, kaya ngayon tayo nag-live stream Sunday. But, um... Hopefully, next week we'll be back ng Sabado na live stream. So, kamusta kayo lahat uh, sa mga bagong pasok uh, na hindi pa ako kilala? Of course, ako nga pala si Fitz Villafuerte. Ayan, hindi na pangalan ko sa baba. Ayan. And I am a registered financial planner. And I would like to welcome you sa Usapang Pera. So, this is my weekly live stream dito sa YouTube where we can talk about personal finance, business, and investments. And uh, for today... I'd like to share with you yung mga things to consider before you invest no, or when you are choosing where to invest, which will be our topic of the day later. And of course, before that, we will uh, start with our quotable quotes where I share with you uh, mga memorable quotes that I find uh, meaningful. And of course, yung last uh, segment ng ating live stream which comes uh, after the topic of the day, is yung ating question and answer portion. So, dun yung time or yun yung opportunity nyo na magtanong sa akin uh, if ever you have any questions about uh, personal finance, uh, business, investing, etc. Alright, so I hope you're all doing well. Um, sana malinaw yung aking boses at malinaw din yung aking video. Hindi ako choppy sa video ko. Yan. Smooth yung galaw ko sa video. <laughs> Alright. So, if you have uh, any comments or questions, uh, you can actually, you can of course use yung ating live chat section which you can, hopefully you can find. Ayan. So, uh, you can type your comments and reactions and questions dyan sa ating live chat. And hello, si, hello kay Marion. Uh, good day, Sir Fitz. May kaltas po ba kapag nag-invest ka sa may trade? Uh, lagi po ako nanonood sa video ng mutual funds insurance. Gusto ko po kasi mag-start. Vendor po ako sa Laguna. Alright. Uh, sige, Marlon, mamaya sasagutin natin yan. Uh, question mo. Uh, but of course, di- depende kasi kung ano yung platform mo. Ano ba yung my trade na yan? As in yung my trade na platform, no? Uh, Mamaya, sagutin natin yan. Uh, so, sige, simulan na natin itong live stream natin. And uh, let's go to our first part, which is yung ating quotable quotes. So welcome to our quotable quotes. This is uh, where we, uh, where I share with you a quote uh, that I find uh, very meaningful. And for today, ang quote na pinili ko ay galing kay Arnold Glasso. Uh, si Arnold Glasso is an American entrepreneur. So isa siyang negosyante. And sinabi niya, success isn't a result of spontaneous combustion. You must set yourself on fire. Alright? So, gustong-gusto ko tong sinabi niya kasi I agree. Mala- a lot of us, we wait for success to just happen sa buhay natin. We think that just by, just by simply working hard and just being patient and waiting for opportunities to come, uh, we will eventually reach for uh, we will eventually achieve success but based from the stories that i've heard based from the uh, people successful people that i've talked to there is a good amount of intention para ma-achieve mo yung success ano ibig sabihin nito kailangan i-initiate mo yung changes sa buhay mo so if you want to be successful uh, at anything in life you have to 
be the prime mover. Ikaw mismo dapat yung mag-initiate ng action. Hindi ka dapat naghihintay. You must set yourself on fire and seek those opportunities. You have to sometimes create the opportunities themselves if you want to be successful. So, hindi pwede yung pachil-chil lang tapos hoping na someday uh, magiging successful ka sa pagninegosyo. For ex- uh, yun yung concrete natin example, no? Uh, meron ako kilala, gusto niya magnegosyo and all uh, all he does is just think about it pero hindi siya nagpa-plano. So, setting yourself on fire is actually making the plan and taking action in uh, making your goal or making your dreams a reality. And bakit mo naman sisilaban yung sarili mo? Eh, I, f- I believe that setting yourself on fire is an example, is a metaphor for really uh, making yourself feel that burning desire to achieve a goal. Which means, of course, it is important to work on a goal na along the lines of our interest and passion. Kasi mahirap mag-succeed sa isang bagay na hindi tayo talaga interesado or hindi talaga natin gusto gawin. So, uh, part of success is really discovering ano ba yung mga interest natin, ano ba yung mga passion natin, ano ba yung talagang gusto nating mangyari sa buhay natin or yung mga gusto nating uh, mga field of uh, interest natin na talagang we are willing to set ourselves on fire just to achieve yung goals natin on that aspect. no? So, success isn't a result of spontaneous combustion. You must set yourself on fire, sabi ni Arnold Glasso. And that's our quotable quote for today and I hope you learn something new uh, by sharing this quote sa inyo. Alright? So, welcome sa ating topic of the day, which is how to decide where to invest. So, balikan ko si Marion. No? Uh, okay, Marion. Sorry, Marion yung una kong nabasa. Marion, sabi niya, may katas po ba pag nag-invest ka sa my MyTrade? Uh, MyTrade, na ang I'm assuming, is the online platform. And uh, like all brokers, like all stock brokers, merong katas yan. I just don't know how much kung uh, how much yung fees ng my trade no uh, siguro you can actually call or get in touch with my trade to ask them how much talaga yung uh, mga fees nila and para sa akin uh, usually these uh, these rates and these fees are very minimal as compared to uh Alam mo yun, sa kikitain mo, uh, I believe na usually ang commission rate is 0.25% nung, nung gross value nung mga nung transaction mo. So, ano yung ibig nung 0.25%. So, for every 100 pesos uh, na, na iti-trade o na i-invest mo or iti-trade mo, 25 centavos yung magiging uh, commission or uh, fees ng broker. Pero, meron yung formula. You should really ask them about it. And, don't worry about those rates and uh, fees because, of course, that's how these brokers uh, make money. And, uh, di ba, kung hindi sila kumikita ng pera, hindi nila ma-manage ma- yung uh, uh, services na ino-offer nila sa iyo. Actually, napaka-convenient na nga nung ginagawa ng mga online brokers na you don't have to leave your house anymore para mag-invest. Dati, uh, nung nag- nagsimula ako sa stock market, wala pa talagang online uh, platforms. Talagang pupunta ako sa Ortigas para mag-invest, mag-open ng account, pupunta ako sa opisina, tinatawagan ko yung uh, stock broker ko para mag 
bigay ng instructions na mag magbumili at mag uh, magbenta ng stocks no so ngayon napaka-convenient you can do it on your own and of course i am willing to pay that those fees para sa convenience and since i've been doing uh, stock investing for more than a decade now i can tell you that uh, especially if you're doing long term investing in the stock market very minimal yung fees na binabayad mo hindi siya ganun kalaki yung hindi ganun kalaki yung effect niya sa sa income mo okay so hi dj hi ground zero uh, meron po bang reit sa philippines and saan po pwede mag-invest okay sige mamaya sasagutin kita dj but uh, before i do uh, before we go dun sa mga mga specific questions ninyo uh, let me let me start by uh, telling you something about our topic of the day which is how to decide where to invest uh, I decided to talk about this topic because I always get a lot of questions. Saan po ba maganda mag-invest? Saan po ba okay, pa buto, okay po ba itong investment na to? And para sa akin, there are three things that you could consider, that you should consider uh, when you are deciding where to invest. Okay? The first consideration is, ano ba yung financial goal mo? Okay? Uh, because your financial goal will dictate saan maganda mag-invest uh, or anong klasing investment yung dapat consider mo. So, if you are uh, investing for a short-term goal, of course, dapat yung low, uh, short-term uh, investment lang yung consider mo. And yung mga short-term investment, unfortunately, ito lang yung, most of them are just low-risk investment. But, wala tayong magagawa doon because we don't want to expose your money sa super high risk, especially kung short term na lang yung iyong uh, investment horizon. So, pag sinabi mong uh, ano ba yung financial goal mo, you divide that into three into three things, pwedeng short term, medium term, and long term goal. So, yung pag-iipon para sa bakasyon next year, basta within two years or less, short term goal siya pag mga 3 years to 5 years or even up to 7 years yan those are medium term goals so dapat nasa medium term type of investment and pag more than 7 years yung financial goal mo like retirement fund so that's a long term goal uh, so da- pwede kang mag-consider ng mga long term investment yung mga short term investment most of them are low risk investment Yung mga medium-term investment, those are usually moderate risk investment, but there are also medium-term investments na low risk. And then yung long-term investments, uh, they tend to be high risk investment, but meron din mga long-term investment na moderate risk at saka low risk. But of course, yung mga low risk investment, lagi siyang uh, low returns. But of course, low risk nga. So, yun yung kapalit nun. Hindi ka masyado expose risk, pero hindi rin ganun kalaki yung pwedeng itaas nung investment mo. So, again, that's the first thing that you have to consider. Ano ba yung financial goal ko? Kailan ko kailangan yung pera? Kasi, yun yung magdidictate kung saan ka dapat, uh, anong klaseng investment dapat yung consider mo in the first place. So, let's just, uh, let's just uh, use an example. Uh, sabihin na natin na you want to invest for the uh, college education of your child. Okay? So, yung anak mo magka-college within 10 years. So, that's you can say that that's already a long-term investment. So, yun yung first consideration mo. The second consideration mo is yung risk tolerance mo. Okay? So, yung risk tolerance mo is gano'n ka ba kadali kabahan pagdating sa investment. I know some people na medyo malakas or mataas yung kanilang uh, investment tolerance, risk tolerance, may, matapang loob nila. So, pag since you need a long-term investment at medyo matapang yung yung loob mo, then you can definitely get a uh, high risk investment na long-term. Okay? So, sabihin na natin na medyo madali kang kabahan and you know na yung anak mo uh, yung college education anak mo is very important. So, you don't want to go for a, 
a high risk investment. Gusto mo siguro mga moderate risk investment lang. So, again, yung yung financial goal which is long term, tapos yung risk tolerance mo is medium. So, meron ka ng dalawang category. You're looking for an investment na pang long term pero moderate risk lang. Okay? And then the last consideration is magkano ba yung kaya mong i-invest, di ba? So, what if ang kaya mong i-invest ay mga around 5,000 pesos a month. No? So, ano ba yung kailangan mong, ano ba yung capacity mo na financial capacity mo na kaya mong i-commit na i-invest regularly? Okay? Uh, may dumada na aeroplano. <laughs> Hindi ko alam kung naririnig niyo guys. But, uh, anyway, <laughs> sige, hintay natin, uh, kasi may medyo malakas. Hintay natin dumaan. Okay. So, anyway, so, the third consideration is your financial capacity. Uh, of course, there are investments na ang minimum amount to invest is very big. So, kaya mo ba? Gano'ng kalaki ba yung kaya mong invest And when I say invest, I'm not saying yung mga one-time, big time. Okay? Uh, when I say invest, usually I refer dun sa capacity mo na mag regularly to put in money dun sa investment which is the cost averaging strategy which is a very uh, efficient strategy especially if you're uh, investing in the long term right so sabihin na natin na kaya mo mag-invest ng 5000 pesos every month so now you have those three categories meron kang you need a long term investment na medyo moderate risk lang na pwedeng mag-invest ng 5,000 pesos a month. ba? So, ano yung example nito? Well, of course, a balanced fund, na mutual fund, would, would fit into that category. So, meaning, you don't invest in real estate, you don't invest in bonds, ba? Kasi, hin- although these are good investments, uh, or you don't invest in the stock market, or because even though these are good investments, it does not fit yung... Uh, categories na kailangan mo. ba? So, again, the first consideration is ano ba yung financial goal mo para malaman mo kung anong anong type of investment yung kailangan mo. Ano yung term niya? And then, second is ano ba yung personal risk tolerance mo para malaman mo kung anong type of risk yung investment, uh, what type of risk does the investment need to have para mag-match dun sa iyong risk tolerance. And of course, and your financial capacity mo so that you can find an investment na mo open mo you you have uh, you will be able to open an investment in there kasi may mga investment na uh, malaki yung kailangan no kailangan 50,000 to open an account so syempre hindi mo siya uh, ma open so you have to know how much are you really willing to to invest regularly plus of course, once you are able to open an investment or once you are able to choose an investment, hindi nagtatapos yun doon. You have to monitor it siguro at least once a year uh, if it's a long-term investment para makita mo if you are really uh, being if you are really uh, coming closer to your financial goal. Okay? So another example, let's say you are planning to get married, you are trying to save up for an emer- uh, for your wedding fund which is uh, balak mo ikasal within uh, the next 2 years diba so you're trying to save up for a wedding fund for the next 2 years so since 2 years yan ibig sabihin short term investment na lang yung hinahanap mo diba so dun pa lang sa category na yon out na yung mga stock market out na yung mga real estate and a lot of the moderate uh, medium term and long term investments out, out na so ikaw ngayon sa, sinabi mo sa sarili mo na uh, medyo matapang ako diba? medyo matapang ako uh, so I can afford a high risk investment so you, para ka makahanap ng short term na high risk investment uh, siguro there are, there, are, there are investment that exist but you have to understand pag sinabi mo high risk, pwedeng mawala yung pera mo. Okay? The, the chances of you losing your money will be high. And 
sabihin na natin na magkano yung kaya mong magkano yung kaya mong i-invest. So let's say na you already have 50,000 save up and you want to grow that para lumaki for your wedding fund. So may naisip ba kayo na pwedeng uh, investment? Para sa akin, there are crowdfunding investments, no? There are um, mga uh, forex investments that you can go into. So again, itong mga crowdfunding and mga forex investments, these are you can consider this as relatively short-term investments kasi mga mabilis gumalaw to eh. But they are really high risk. Sabi mo kasi matapaw yung loob mo eh, high risk so pwede, no? And uh, of course, yung 50,000 mo usually that's enough for you to open an investment account dito sa mga to sa mga cooperatives na to mga crowdfunding investments ngayon kung medyo kinakabahan ka and sabihin na natin na ayaw mo ng mataas na risk you want to secure yung wedding fund mo then you can just go for a low risk investment so ano ba yung short term na low risk investment well what comes to mind is uh, uh, a money market fund or a fixed income fund na mutual fund or UITF or even yung time deposit. Ngayon, ang tanong is yung 50,000 mo, will it grow enough for you to uh, have yung wedding fund mo? Sabihin na natin na gusto mo magkaroon ng 200,000 pesos na wedding fund. I don't think that is realistic. No? Yung 50,000 magiging 200,000 in 2 years. Which means, hindi mo kailangan pilitin yung sarili mo mag-invest sa high risk kasi nga kakabahan ka. But it only means that you have to focus on your cash flow. Medyo mag-iipon ka pa ng malaki-laki, di ba? Para ma-reach mo yung target dream mo na wedding fund. But of course, while you are doing that, your the money that you already have is already invested and growing uh, and helping you uh, achieve your financial goal, alright? So, I hope may natutunan kayo doon sa ating topic of the day today, yung how to decide where to invest. So, as a summary, you have to first define your financial goal. And then second, you have to know your risk tolerance para alam mo kung anong klaseng risk yung uh, investment na kukunin mo. And number three, you have to look at your financial capacity. Kasi kung medyo maliit yung kaya mong i-invest, then aside from investing, you have to focus on making more money or creating streams of additional streams of income so that you can invest more. And of course, it also helps you choose ano ba yung classing investment or ano yung classing investment na pwede ka, saan investment ka pwede mag-open kasi of course may mga minimum uh, investment requirement yung mga iba't ibang investment uh, institutions. All right? So, I guess that's it for our topic of the day and uh Of course, before we move on, I'd like to again invite you to please like and uh, please subscribe sa ating live stream channel, sa ating YouTube channel and share to your friends so that we can finally achieve yung 1,000 subscribers na goal natin. All right? So, maraming mga nagsasayta na sa chat. So, sabugutin natin yung mga questions niyo. So, let's immediately move on sa ating question and answer. Good afternoon again and welcome sa question and answer. So, I know na ito talaga yung paborito yung part ng ating uh, uh, live stream. No? So, nialagay ko siya sa dulo kasi I want more people to come in. Uh, so, meron tayong quotable quote at saka topic of the day just for uh, give time sa mga tao na pumasok. So, anyway, uh, balikan natin yung sinabi ni Marion. Uh, long time po sa... sa A long term po para sa pamana type para may magagamit na sila. Alright. So, pang long term yung gusto mong investment, uh, pamana, no? uh, ibig sabihin legacy fund. 
uh, para sa anak mo. Okay. So, tinatanong mo, Marion, kung saan maganda mag-invest na long-term kasi you want to build up your uh, legacy fund or yung pera na ipapamanan mo sa mga anak mo. So, again, uh, you have to consider ano ba yung risk tolerance mo. Okay lang ba sa iyo na medyo kabahan <laughs> pag mag invest ka kasi volatile, nag up and down or gusto mo yung chill lang, no? yung hindi masyadong nag nagbabago yung yung value nung investment mo konti lang siya slow and steady nang umaakyat so based on your risk tolerance na long term investment uh, doon natin ma-determine kung saan ka pwedeng mag-invest but of course the last part na pwede, na kailangan mo i-consider is magkano ba yung kaya magkano ba yung kaya mo i-invest and when when we are investing for long term it's always important na to do it regularly. Hindi pwedeng one time, big time, mag invest ka lang. Kasi, uh, hindi ganun ka ganda or hindi ganun kalaki yung pwede mong kitain. May mga kilala ko na yung mga investment sila, grabe, ang laki-laki na, mga 10 million, 15 million na yung value. Pero, you ask them, ano yun? In-invest ba nila ng one time, big time yun? And, most of the time, ang sagot nila is hindi. Unti-unti yun na na inipon mga karamihan sa kanila nagii-invest ng mga 10,000 every quarter no every 3 months pero they've been doing it for several years now and doon na ipon doon lumaki ng milyon yung pera nila kasi maliit lang paunti-unti okay so depending ngayon kung saan magkano yung kailangan mong invest but for a long term investment i would uh, suggest na go for a an equity fund uh, or uh, or the stock market. So, pwede kang mag-mutual fund or UITF na equities or invest directly in the stock market. And when it comes to investing, it's important to, uh, especially if it's your first time, it's important to go for an investment na madali buksan sa'yo. No? I- invest where it is convenient. Okay? So, I'm assuming, Mario, na meron ka namang bank account. So, if you have a bank account, go to your own bank, ask them for their unit investment trust fund, choose an equity fund, and then you can start investing there. Sa para madali lang buksan kasi meron ka ng account mismo doon sa bank ko. Plus, mas convenient kasi all you have to do is uh, fund transfer usually eh, lang papunta doon sa uh, unit investment trust fund mo. Ngayon, if you want to open a, a mutual fund account, then go ahead uh, basta hindi ka tatama rin, ha? and fortunately a lot of mutual funds naman ngayon pwede ka na rin mag-invest online if they have a platform okay so ang importante hindi ka tatama rin dun sa investment mo and if it's a long term investment you can choose an equity fund kung medyo mataas ang risk tolerance mo kung medyo madali kang kabahan pwede kang mag moderate risk which is yung uh, balance fund ngayon kung talagang ayaw mo ng high risk, gusto mo lang low risk, then pwede mo siyang i-time deposit. But, I will tell you now na pag long term ang investment horizon mo, then you can actually afford to uh, invest in a moderate or high risk investment. Kasi, you have enough time uh, for to wait for your investment to grow. So, may ups and downs ang market, but since long term ka, hindi mo kailangan mag-worry ng sobra because uh, you will be able to ride through the market's uh, ups and downs. All right. So, that's my advice sa iyo, Marion. Um, balikan natin yung tanong ni DJ. No? Meron na po bang REIT sa Philippines and saan po pwede mag-invest? So, sa mga hindi pa nakakalam, ang REIT ay uh, Real Estate Investment Trust. So, I wrote a... An article, a primer about REITs sa blog ko. I will uh, put it sa sa comment section. Ano, sa comment, sa, sa description nitong live stream na to. Uh, yung link papunta do sa article na, article na yun. But, you can also type sa Google na REIT space fits Villafuerte para makita ninyo yung uh, article na yun. So, gagawin ko siya ngayon. REIT Fitz Villa Fuerte. Tapos, lalabas sa Google results yung, uh, yung top one, yung aking article. Yan, kasi nakalagay yung pangalan ko. So, Real Estate 
Investment Trust. Ilalagay ko ngayon sa chat. Okay, so my blog article. Yan. Okay, so yan. Tinay po ngayon sa chat yung link papunta sa article about Real Estate Investment Trust. So ano ba yung Real Estate Investment Trust? Para isipin nyo na lang siya na para siyang mutual fund. Pero yung pera ng mutual fund, naka-invest lang siya sa mga real estate projects na mga, basta any, the income can only come from uh, real estate. So, pwedeng rental income, prop, uh, properties na may rental income or uh, mga derivatives of, of different types of uh, real estate projects. Alright? So, meron bang REIT sa, sa Pilipinas? Soon magkakaroon, okay? Uh, parang yung pera so many years ago. So, ginagawa pa yung mga implementing rules and regulations but hopefully, uh, ma-launch na siya formally and we can already start investing in REITs. If lumabas yan, of course, in general, maganda siyang investment but until I learn more about the specific REIT na you offer, I cannot say na if it's a good investment for the long term or medium term or short term. And I believe it's Ayala who is uh, Ayala Land who is spearheading, spearheading the project no of offering REIT investments in the Philippines. Google nga natin, uh, REIT Philippines. Ayan, implementing rules and regulations. Alam ko yun yung uh, inaayos pa, no? So, ito, there's a, there's a news that I found that the REIT rules is expected to come out anytime soon this year. So, wala pa. Hopefully, magkakaroon, uh, ma-offer na siya soon, but as of now, wala. Ngayon, kung gusto niya mag-invest sa mga REITs, which is actually uh, uh, already available sa mga ibang bansa. Uh, there's the... Ako, uh, I have investments dun sa iShares Core US REIT ETF. Ang haba, no? Uh, basta, it's an REIT, it's an REIT uh, exchange traded fund na investment sa US. And where do I invest? Through eToro. So, yan. Siguro, it's a good, <laughs> it's a good time to plug Yan. So, eToro is a social investment network. So, it's a global uh, multi-asset broker. And they actually have a um, ongoing Chinese New Year promo na that if you open an account and fund your account, you get a $50 bonus in your account. But you have to do this on or before February 5. Alright. So, back sa ating uh, Q&A. Yan. So, I invest... I invest through eToro, uh, which gives me access to uh, foreign-based REITs like yung iCore shares na US na REIT Exchange Traded Fund. And for the past several uh, couple of years, it has been performing very well. Okay, So you don't have to wait for the REIT, uh, REITs to be uh, offered in the Philippines. There are already... REITs in other countries that you can invest on through eToro. But if you want to wait for the REIT in the Philippines, then uh, go ahead. Okay lang. I can't really say anything much about the REIT that will be offered locally because I haven't seen the prospectus yet. I, I haven't seen the prospectus yet. So, hintayin na lang natin. So, basically, an REIT is a mutual fund pero yung pera uh, sa mga real estate uh, projects lang siya ini-invest. Alright? So, yun. I hope I was able to answer your question. Um, DJ, no? Tama ba? Okay. okay. Sabi ni uh, Paolo. Oh, hello, Paolo. Yan. Ang ating uh, laging nanonood sa live stream natin. So, good good afternoon, Jericho. Sabi ni Paolo, how do we measure a person and what type of investment is suitable for a particular person? Ah, uh, Depende sa iyo talaga yon kung kakabahan ka o hindi. Uh, I think isa sa mga hindi masyadong nako-consider is yung capacity natin to tolerate yung risk. Uh, so umpisa, 
we ask people kung saan maganda mag-invest. Kasi ako mismo, I've, I've met people na uh, they, are, they are willing to invest daw sa mga high risk. So, siyempre, binibigay ko sa, oh, this stock market, bukas tayo ng, ng investment sa stock market kasi sabi mo, malakas yung loob mo. Tapos, after a few months, biglang bumagsak yung stock market, kinakabahan sila, natatakot na sila. So, sabi ko sa kanila, I, I thought mataas yung risk tolerance mo. So, kung ganito na kakabahan ka, then probably it's better for you to invest in a lower risk type of investment. So, it's really hard for me to know kung ano yung risk tolerance mo. That's why I have to really repeat na kailangan kilala mo yung sarili mo. Okay? So, tatanoy, I always uh, ask again and again, talaga bang mataas ang risk tolerance or talaga bang hindi ka kakabahan pag bumagsak to? So, I, I usually tell them, ito yung worst case scenario. Pwede yung 100,000 mo bumaba hanggang 70,000 kasi nga, uh, it's the the stock market kung can suddenly go down. Okay? So, okay ba sa'yo na bababa siya ng 70,000, magiging 60,000 siya? But, after siguro mga mga 4 years, 5 years, aakit ulit siya ng mga 100,000. Eventually, if you wait long enough, mga 5, 6, 7, 8 years, tsaka siya kikita ng malaki. Diyan, tsaka siya aabot siguro ng mga 150,000. Pwede siya dumobli after mga 10 years. So, pero yung journey niya, up and down. So, I try to explain uh, that to people and pag umuo sila, <laughs> so, I trust that they are telling the truth. So, as a financial planner, it's really hard for me to to tell kung ano yung classing type of uh, risk tolerance meron yung isang tao up until I really give them yung mga specific scenarios sa pwede mangyari. I ask, I repeat my questions again and again just to make sure. Uh, but at the end of the day, if you don't feel comfortable dun sa performance ng investment mo, then it is still your decision to move it to another type of investment kung medyo kinakabahan ka. Katulad ng isa kong client na nung bumaba yung stock market because the stock market has been down for several years already, a couple of years, no? talaga sideways lang siya and down. I tell them na, if this is really making you uncomfortable and you don't mind uh, taking a loss, pero kahit maliit lang naman, then we can just move your money towards a, a bond fund or a high interest savings account even. Diba? So, eventually, nag-decide siya na i-move na lang daw sa isang balance fund at saka isang bond fund. So, lower risk type of investment. And willing daw siya na malugi ng konti, basta daw hindi na siya kinakabahan. So, yun yung ginawa namin. Alright. So, uh, do you recommend having peso cost averaging method on investing on stock market and or cryptocurrencies? Uh, yung peso cost averaging, it's good for the stock market. It's good for mutual fund or investment funds. But I will not recommend it on cryptocurrencies kasi ang peso cost averaging method, ang assumption dyan, kung yung pera na nilalagay mo, uh, yung pera ay nilalagay mo sa isang investment na ang long term niya ay upwards yung trend. Okay? Kailangan upwards yung trend. That's why it's very good on the stock market if you choose a, a company na long term meron siyang growth potential. Ano, kung, ano ibig ko sabihin? Mm, if you invest in a company like Ayala Land or Jollibee, uh, of course, without really studying their fundamentals, alam mo na, over the next 10, 15 years, these companies uh, have a good potential to continuously grow as a company. So, these companies, pwede mong lagyan ng pera for cost averaging. Ngayon, if I tell you na yung Cemex, na isang cement factory, isang cement company, what are their prospects for the next 5-10 years? It's hard to say. Hindi natin alam. Uh, I, we don't know anything much about the specific company. So, ibig sabihin, hindi siya magandang lagyan ng uh, pera for peso cost averaging. Ngayon, yung mutual funds, be, because they are being managed professionally uh, by fund managers, by experts, then 
uh, we have the confidence that the fund managers will work hard to make the fund grow. So that's why doing peso cost averaging of mutual funds or unit investment trust funds is also a good idea. Ngayon, cryptocurrency, sabihin natin yung Bitcoin, Ripple, Ethereum, itong mga to. Pag tinanong ko sa'yo, what are their growth potential for the next 5, 10 years? Di ba? Can you confidently say na tataas ang presyo ng Bitcoin, ng Ethereum, ng Ripple after 10 years? Tataas siya? Hindi natin masabi kasi highly speculative pa rin ang cryptocurrency. Hindi pa rin siya publicly accepted as a form of uh, payment no there are peop- um, there are industry there are industries that are adapting yung cryptocurrencies but it is still not a major part uh, of of commerce of e-commerce no so ibig sabihin hindi siya hindi ako confident na continuously na aakyat ang ang value ng mga cryptocurrencies no they will continually they will continuously be volatile. Yun yung at best. So, ibig sabihin, hindi siya magandang lagyan ng pera for peso cost averaging kasi hindi tayo sigurado na aakit siya. So, yung mga investments na ipepeso cost averaging mo ay yung confident ka na after 10 years ay mas mataas na yung value niya. Which means you you pick up, uh, you invest in blue chip companies, you you invest in investment funds, mga mutual fund and UITF that are being managed well. Okay? So, yun lang yung mga pwede mong lagyan ng peso ko, uh, pwede mong gawa ng peso cost averaging strategy. So, I would say na wag mo siya gagawin sa cryptocurrencies and wag mo siya gagawin sa mga companies in the stock market na speculative. Alright? So, I was I hope I was able to answer your question, uh, Paolo. Alright? So, si Troy Tayaba. Uh, hello, Troy. Uh, hello, Sir Fist. What is SPVUL? Is it good? Is SPVUL better than other types of VUL? Uh, is, is SPVUL good for estate planning? So, what do you recommend? ETF or mutual fund? Okay, ang dami niyang tanong. Uh, before I answer that, iinom lang ako ng tubig. <laughs> okay, sa so dali lang ha. Meron akong water bottle para sikulan sa akin yung isang basong tubig. So, nagkikip ako ng ano. Okay. So, sabi ni Troy, uh, what is SPVUL? So, single pay variable unit link insurance is, di ba pag bumibili ka ng, ng life insurance policy, meron kang annual or monthly or quarterly. Basta meron kang binabayaran na, na regularly. Pag SPVUL, uh, isang bayaran lang siya. Isang malaking pera na i-invest mo sa SPVUL. And, Ang life insurance coverage mo is usually 125% of the amount that you put in. So, for example, pag nag ka ng isang million sa isang SPVUL, ang life insurance coverage mo ay 1.25 million. Yun yung death benefit mo. Tapos, yung a portion of the, of the money that you invest, uh, a portion of the money that you put in the SPVUL will now be invested dun sa chosen uh, mutual fund mo na nakadikit dun sa uh, life insurance policy na na, na pinili mo. Alright? So, iba-iba yung mga terms and conditions ng SPVUL sa iba't ibang life insurance companies. Uh, but I would say that it is a good investment. And I usually recommend SPVUL para sa Exactly doon sa sinabi mo, estate planning. Okay? Bakit? Kasi, uh, ang SPVUL, they tend to actually be, they actually uh, earn more than doing yung mga cost averaging. No? But of course, ang downside ng SPVUL, you need to have a large amount of money already kept to invest there. Okay? So, it's actually a good tool for, for estate planning because ang assumption niya, nakapag-build ka na ng substantial amount of wealth. And if you already have a substantial amount of wealth, ibig sabihin, you can actually afford to already invest in a single pay VUL just for you to cover yung current estate taxes natin na 6%, di ba? So, let's say na meron kang 50 million pesos worth of assets, okay? And you want to protect your family when if ever 
ma may mangyari sa'yo, uh, you want to cover yung estate uh, taxes na kailangan na bayaran. So, what is 6% of 50 million? That is uh, 3 million. So, yung 50 million mo na worth of assets, kumuha ka ng 3 million, kumuha ka ng SPVUL, ilagay mo yung 3 million. So, at least, pag may nangyari sa'yo, merong makukuha yung family mo na 3 million pambayad ng estate taxes mo. But at the same time, kung walang mangyari sa'yo, yung 3 million mo, it will now start to accumulate uh, some value, it will start to grow, magkakaroon siya ng uh, higher uh, uh, cash value because it is also invested. Alright? So, what do, you, what do you recommend as an ET, What do you recommend? ETF or mutual fund? Uh, para sa akin, both are good. In, instead of choosing, you can invest in both. Diba? Uh, in the Philippines, there's only one type of ETF, which is yung sa first metro. So, you invest there. And then, kung meron kang 10,000 to invest, why not buy 5,000 of ETF and then 5,000 na mutual fund. And specifically sa ETF at saka sa mutual fund, hindi ko nire-recommend yung one-time big time. Although, that's good. But, uh, you determine ano yung financial capacity mo na pwede mong invest regularly. As in, every month or every two months or every quarter. no? And kung gagawin mo yon na regularly, sabihin na natin na every quarter nag invest ka, then pwede kang mag-invest sa ETF this month, then sa next cycle mo sa isang mutual fund kang mag-invest, then sa next one, babalik ka sa ETF. So, ganun yung gawin nyo guys. Hindi nyo kailangan, hindi nyo kailangan mamili pwede nyo gawin pareho, especially if it's investing. Alright. So, sabi ni D.V. Berm, teka lang ah, nasisilaw ako, uh, imumove ko lang sandali yung aking, uh, yan, tama ba? Okay, para hindi ako masyadong nasisilaw. Uh, sabi ni D.V. Berm, Happy Sunday Surface, is it still worth it to buy pre-selling condo in Metro Manila for rental income, especially now that the prices are very high. Uh, in general, I don't recommend buying pre-selling condo kung ang goal mo ay rental income. Bakit? Kasi yung pre-selling condo, ma-transfer ma, 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 sa sa'yo yung property after 3-4 years. no? So, by that time, uh, baka mamaya, iba na yung, iba na yung situation dun sa area kung saan ka bumili ng pre-selling condo. So, what I recommend is, consider buying a foreclosed property na foreclosed apartment or foreclosed na condo unit. Yun yung bilhin mo para sigurado ka na yung area na yun is, is viable for rental. Okay? So, Sa, sa situation ngayon, isipin mo, saan ba maganda maghanap na, saan ba maganda magkaroon ng isang rental property? So, just an example, sa university belt, yan, maganda magkaroon ng rental property doon kasi maraming mga college students na uh, naghahanap ng rent, na, naghahanap ng unit na pwede nilang rentahan. So, ang gawin mo ngayon, if you're, if you're in the university belt area, you can probably go to the big branches ng mga banks dun sa area and then ask inquire you know, ano ba yung mga mga foreclosed property sila dun sa area na yon na pwedeng gawing apartment and then if you find a good uh, a property then yun yung bilhin mo kasi once you are able to process the papers of buying uh ma turn over sa yung unit and mapaparentahan mo siya kagad, di ba? So, there is little time wasted uh, and you can immediately make money. And of course, yung rental mo, you can that can pay for your uh, mortgage, for your loan dun sa, dun sa properties. And which eventually, after siguro mga 7 years, ma, ma, mababayaran mo na in full. And then, the rental now becomes pure passive income by that time. Alright? So, I don't really, I'm not really on board sa buying pre-selling condo. I am more of the foreclosed property type of person na if you want to invest in real estate, if you want to uh, make money from rental properties, then probably consider 
uh, looking for for close properties kasi immediately you can make money, di ba? Immediately you can have it rented out. Immediately you can uh, do buy and sell without wasting a few years waiting for the for the condo unit to finish and be turned over sa iyo. All right? Any rule of thumb with regards to ROI and rental yield? Uh, hindi ko alam kung saan galing sa kung saan galing yung binigay sa akin ng friend ko na real estate investor. Ah, uh, basta sinabi niya sa akin, kung magkano yung 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 unit na binili mo, i-divide mo siya ng uh, seven years and then makukuha mo ngayon yung dapat na monthly income or monthly rental niya. So, let's say na kunwari may binili ka na property na worth 5 million. Yan, 5 million. Yan, nagbukas ako ng calculator ko. So, i-divide mo ng 7 years. Divide natin ng 12. Lalabas na mga 59,000 per month. So, yung property na binili mo, dapat at least mga 59,000 per month yung rental mo. So, medyo malaki, no? For a 5 million property. But, there are also uh, articles that I've read na kahit ng mga 10 years, it's also an acceptable uh, ROI for real estate uh, especially if you're going for for rental income so kung 5 million yung property uh, papatak na mga around 40,000 per month yung dapat na rental para mag ROI ka in 10 years so malaking investment ang real estate and ang ROI niya usually mga 7 to 10 years if you are if you're going to rely solely on rental income para mabawi yung nilagay mo but of course Ang maganda sa real estate, it is a source of passive income, especially kung very stable yung iyong uh, rent, no? Ayan. So, sabi ni Paolo, uh, what is pag MP2? Do you recommend po having MP2 for beginners? Uh, thank you uh, very, very much. Well, ang pag-ibig fund, uh, modified pag-ibig fund 2, it's actually an investment that is being offered by uh, pag-ibig uh, by, by the government and it's different from the pag-ibig fund kasi yung uh, home development mutual fund or yung pag-ibig is a way for Filipinos to 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 buy property through a home loan sa pag-ibig and yung pinapaloan out ng pag-ibig fund so kunwari ako gusto ko mag-home loan sa pag-ibig kasi bibili ako ng bahay yung pera na bibigay sa akin ng pag-ibig uh, comes not only from the contributions of the other pag-ibig fund members, but also yung mga taong nag invest sa MP2. Okay? So, of course, bibigyan ako ni pag-ibig fund ng interest rate doon sa uutangin ko. Sabihin natin na uh, bibigyan niya ako ng 10% na interest doon sa pag-ibig fund loan ko. So, si pag-ibig fund ngayon, yung mga nag invest sa MP2, pwede niyang bigyan ng 6%. Okay? So kasi galing din naman sa kanila yung pera. So umiikot lang yung pera. So yun yung ano, yun yung pag-ibig MP2. It's a modified pag-ibig fund. So it's an investment and ang minimum number of years niya ay 5 years. Yun yung holding period niya. So yung MP2, hindi siya parang hindi siya parang mutual fund na you have to do cost averaging. Ang MP2, ang pag-ibig MP2 it's really a one-time investment na I would recommend na ang long ang ang investment horizon mo ay 5 years. So, kung meron kang pera na medyo malaki na willing kang hindi makita for 5 years, pwede mo siya alagay sa pag-ibig MP2. May makilala kasi ako na parang every month nag nag invest sa pag-ibig fund to kasi 500 lang eh, no? Para sa akin na parang very tedious 'yon. It's better na ipuni mo yung pera mo uh, yearly probably. It's a good uh, thing. It's a good investment that you can do once a year. Pero yung gagawin mo siyang monthly or quarterly, uh, I find it very tedious already. And uh, it is recommended for beginners but uh, ang prerequisite ng MP2 is dapat meron kang pag-ibig fund contributions. Which means also kung ikaw ay freelancer at ikaw ay negosyante, you have to reactivate your pag-ibig fund membership. 
Ngayon, if you're already an employee and you're planning on resigning very soon or within the next five years, plano mo mag-resign at uh, magtayo na sarili mo negosyo or maging freelancer, basta you have to remember that if you invested sa isang sa MP2, you have to continue you have to continue your uh, pag-ibig fund membership by volu- by being a voluntary pay voluntary paying member, no? So those are the considerations. So it's good for beginners, but you have to always keep in mind yung 5 year na holding period niya. So whatever amount that you will invest there, after 5 years mo na siya makikita. So again, I cannot say if it's a good or bad investment kasi may mga conditions tayo that you have to be aware of. no. So, pwede mo sabihin na, oh, hindi ko kailangan within 5 years yung pera na yan. Pero after 2 years, bigla kang meron kang financial emergency. Wala ka palang, financial, wala ka palang emergency fund, tapos bigla kang maghahanap ng pera. Diba? So, hindi mo makuha kahit na maglupasay ka sa labas ng pag-ibig fund office. Hindi mo makukuha yung, yung pera na in- in-invest mo sa MP2. Diba? Uh, of course, there will be exceptions, but in general, hindi mo makukuha yung pera na yon within the next 5 years. So, you have to decide if you are willing to accept those terms. Alright? So, on eToro, what investment strategies recommended for beginners? Uh, sa eToro, I would recommend doing yung copy trading, uh, which means copying other people dun sa eToro and just letting your money grow passively. If you can check out yung aking... Uh, Website, I actually feature there six people na very good to copy sa eToro. Mga malalaki kumita or mga consistent yung kanilang income sa eToro. Uh, sa out of the six people, I actually copy four of those people. So, do copy trading if you're a beginner, uh, uh, particularly on eToro. Alright? So, sabi ni... ni uh, Hello, Den Polan. Hi, good afternoon. And sabi ni the uh, DJ who who has been your greatest influence when it comes to investing. I wouldn't uh, really have a specific person in mind, uh, particularly because uh, wala talaga akong kilalang magaling na investor personally. Kasi uh, I grew up in a family na medyo traditional talaga na uh, you you study, uh, you work. Uh, you climb up the corporate ladder, etc. No, Ngayon, pagdating sa mga local uh, people na magaling mag-invest, uh, I would say si Rex Mendoza would be uh, someone that I look up to. I wouldn't say that he is my greatest influence because I, got, I, I met Rex Mendoza at the time na investor na ako. But I really like his books, no? yung mga... Mga sinulat niya and I, we are aligned when it comes to our investing principles. Pagdating naman sa abroad, uh, of course, people, a lot of people look up to uh, uh, Warren, Buffet, Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett. Uh, si, I know some people who ina-idolize niya si George Soros and si Peter Lynch. No? Uh, again, I wouldn't say na... They greatly influenced me, but the most that I can say is I admire their investing principles and I find myself uh, na agreeing with most of what they're saying. So, yung mga investment philosophy ko, uh, a lot of them, I learned them through trial and error, through experience. Uh, one of the things that I learned pagdating sa investing is it's a very personal task, no? Uh, hindi mo basta-basta pwedeng kopyahin ko ano yung ginagawa ng ibang tao kasi kahit na itong specific strategy na to or is itong specific philosophy na to, it works very well for someone, katulad si si Warren Buffett Warren Buffett, dahil ko namimiss mo lang si Uptin si Warren Buffett he likes value investing, no? So, value investing work excellently para kay kay Warren Buffett. But I don't see myself doing that kasi masyado akong impatient pagdating naman sa talagang i-hold mo yung isang company for for 10 years, 20 years, no? Ang 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 
principal ni Warren Buffett is but once a binili mo yung company talagang you will hold on to it for decades para sa akin uh, that even if it's a successful strategy I don't find myself uh, comfortable doing that same principle no uh, so I don't know if I am able to answer your question but I guess I have a lot of people that I admire I wouldn't really say na they are these people have greatly influenced me but I really look up to them uh, I find their investing principles uh, aligned with my principles most of the time but in the end yung mga investing strategies ko investing investing principles ko yung values that I follow uh, these are things that I developed through experience and these are the things that I believe na appropriate for my financial goals that's why I choose to do them all right so medyo mabigat to, but the very interesting question ay yung binigay mo sa akin DJ no so sabi ni Troy is SSS still good even if you have other investments such as stocks REIT mutual fund and real estate um I don't know if uh, what you are particular uh, what are you referring to but of course ang SSS it's a social security system so hindi siya talaga investment it's actually something that you do for ang main benefit kasi ng SSS is yung mga loans na you can avail that they offer sa members and of course yung eventually when you retire meron kang pension but of course yung pension ng SSS very small you cannot just rely on that for your invest uh, for your retirement you have to have other investments ngayon ang SSS because it is backed by the government then it is actually uh, a low risk type of investment na that's good for the long term which means okay lang na mag-invest sa SSS even if you have other investments kasi pagdating sa finance it's always good to diversify so meron kang SSS meron kang mga may nag-iipon ka diyan para sa yung pension okay lang and then you're also investing in real estate and eventually hoping na you turn your real estate properties into rental income again for your uh, retirement di ba so meron ka ng pension from SSS meron ka pang rental income from yung real estate then you have mutual funds stocks uh, para maggrow yung money mo uh, for so that when you retire meron kang lump sum na pwede mo probably uh, pambili ng isang franchise business so again you can create more uh, income for you when you retire or probably your travel fund when you retire no pwede ka mag-travel so it's good to diversify it's good to put your money in different uh, types of investments as long as meron kang goal and all those investments are working together to to help you reach your financial goal. So okay lang na uh, nakakalat yung pera mo. Ako gusto ko yung yung uh, principle of diversification. And I know some financial and investment analysts uh, they disagree. No? Gusto ni, sabi nila just focus on one investment, be good at that investment. Then I would say na that strategy works for them. Uh, if you feel that your values and principles is more like them, then go ahead and follow yung kanilang advice. Kasi I, I believe that personal finance is personal. So if you find yourself agreeing a lot with what I'm saying, then maybe yung aking investment strategies, uh, which includes diversification, would something that... Uh, would be something that you can also do and be comfortable with, di ba? So, kailangan kilala niyo yung sarili niyo, kasi marami talaga ng financial strategies out there, uh, maraming klaseng investments that you can choose from. So, hindi, wala talagang best investment. It's really about finding the best investment and doing the best strategy that is aligned with your financial goals and financial principles. Alright. So, yun. Uy, more than one are na tayo nag, nag-question and answer. No? Sige. Uh, let's uh, just finish uh, some of the quest- uh, couple, last couple of questions siguro and then magpapaalam na tayo. So, sabi ni Dan Pulan, okay po ba ang combination na MP2 for medium term 
and stock market for long term. Para po sa business yung MP2, then yung stock market po for retirement. Uh, yes, I would say, of course, I cannot, uh, I will not say that this is a uh, uh, financial recommendation because I don't know your exact financial capacity. But from what you've said, uh, mukhang okay naman yung plano mo. So, yung pera na in-invest mo sa MP2, uh, eventually you will use it for your, for capital as capital for your business, which should be ang plan mo siguro within 5 years. After 5 years ka magtatayo ng negosyo. So, if so, then okay. And then you are investing in the stock market for your retirement, which is a long term. Uh, which is also my usual recommendation. If you're trying to, to save up and invest for your retirement, then the stock market and, the, and equity funds are the best places to put it. But, just make sure that you're buying companies in the stock market na maganda ang long-term growth potential. So, huwag kang mag invest sa mga, mga speculative companies. no? Kasi yung mga speculative companies in the stock market, they are good for stock market trading and not stock market investing. Okay? Sabi ni DJ, uh, what are the most recommended investment vehicles for seniors? Nako! As in senior citizen, para sa akin, pagdating sa senior citizens, it's best to just uh, uh, invest your money sa mga low or moderate risk type of investments. Mahirap na, mahirap na mag-recommend ng high risk investments kasi siyempre seniors na. No? So, on the onset, it's, it really depends on the situation of the specific person. It's hard to say a specific investment. But, uh, putting it in a low or moderate risk type of investment is an option. Uh, I've met actually people who are about to retire na wala pang investment and as in wala silang naipon for their retirement. And they are asking me, ano bang gagawin ko dun sa retirement pay na makukuha ko? And immediately, ang sagot ko sa kanila, learn how to start a business. Learn about entrepreneurship. Kasi, when you retire, you get your retirement fund. Wala kang naipong investment or wala kang retirement fund. Uh, aasa ka lang sa pension na ibibigay sa'yo ng SSS at saka yung maliit na pension na probably makukuha niya sa, sa company. Uh, sabi ko, that will not be enough for you to, to, to live a comfortable retirement life. Now, you have the opportunity to, to, to uh, set the next chapter of your life once you retire. And that is probably finally learning how to be an entrepreneur. So, sabi ko, uh, read about entrepreneurship, read non-fiction books about businesses, and decide to to join yung world of entrepreneurship when you retire. Kasi I think that will be the best way to survive your retirement years financially, creating your own cash flow no so yun usually yung 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 tinatanong ko kapag mayroong mga about to retire or people who are already retired tapos nakakuha ng retirement fund ng retirement pay na medyo malaki pero hindi niya alam kung saan i-invest no kung wala kang retirement fund during the time na mag-retire ka yung pera na makukuha mo sa retirement fund i believe it's best to use that as capital for business so that you can create a source of income for yourself or even use that money to buy a foreclosed rental property and immediately earn from uh, rental. No? Basta you have to create cash flow from your retirement fund. Uh, yun yung usually uh, priority ko for uh, seniors or for retirees. No? Kasi a mortality rate ngayon sa Pilipinas is around 80 years old. I know, 71 years old, sorry. 71 years old. So, if you retire at 60, you still have around 11 years to live. And kung wala kang naipon na pera by the time that you are 60, saan ka kukuha ng pera for the next 11 years? Aasa ka sa mga anak mo. But, of course, uh, you also want your children to uh, parang use their own money to further uh, save up for their own retirement fund. No? So, you're actually going to take away a portion of that uh, money 
uh, and you are taking away that opportunity for your children na ma-create yung kanilang sariling retirement fund. So, you have to learn how to cut the cycle. Kasi pag umasa ka sa mga anak mo, then yung mga anak ng anak mo, uh, may hirapan din sila. Kasi by the time na mag-retire yung mga anak mo, wala rin silang naipon na pera kasi yung pera na dapat pang retirement nila ginamit mo kasi umasa ka sa mga anak mo so don't don't uh, don't be like that no so uh, that's why it's important to uh, save up for your uh, retirement no to prepare for your retirement ngayon if you've reached retirement and you haven't really uh, save up for your retirement fund ang focus mo dapat is creating income okay which means learning how to start a business, how to run a business. Probably, you can do some franchising uh, or doing a tech startup even. No? Probably, hindi natin alam kung ano yung uh, financial capacity mo. But, the earlier you start, the better. Alright? So, yun ang advice ko sa mga seniors. Okay. So, last question na ba to? Ayan. Hi, good to see you in live action, man. Watching with the family from our Malolosom. Hello, New, Har- New Hampshire Jack. So, medyo, ma- medyo barado na ilong ko. <laughs> so, I hope hindi na ngongo yung bosses ko. So, hello, hello. Any thoughts on investing in preferred share? Sabi ni DV Berm. Okay, last question na to uh, before we say goodbye. So, investing in preferred shares, it's actually uh, a way for you to to earn passive income. So, yung mga preferred shares of the company, if you, I would say na it's a, it's a second level type of investment. Ah, excuse me. It's a second level type of investment, which means, what I meant is, kung wala ka na masyadong mapaglagyan ng pera mo, pwede mo na siyang uh, i-consider na investing in preferred shares. Kasi, the reason why you invest in preferred shares in stock market is because you want dividends. Yun talaga yung number one uh, benefit of investing in preferred shares. Ngayon, I invest in the stock market kasi uh, someday if I reach my target goal, I would sell the shares and then the money I will use for something else. Ngayon, yung pera na ini-invest mo sa, per- sa preferred shares, you actually don't have uh, concrete plans of selling it someday. Kaya mo siya binili ng preferred shares because you are after the dividends, the regular income that will come from that. So, if that is something that you are if that is something that is part of if that is part of your financial goal, uh, creating uh, uh, a passive income by investing this much amount on the preferred shares of a particular company then go ahead. So, uh, my thought is the stock market it's really good for growing your money no uh, particularly buying common shares waiting for it to grow and then selling it and then using the money for something else ako kasi yung mga kinikita ko sa stock market i usually use it as business capital for ayan uh, for a uh, capital for my business so i prefer my passive income to come from my own businesses ayan and that's what I do. So if we have, if yung ating financial principles are aligned, then maybe that's something that you can also do. But I actually know some people na we bili talaga sila ng preferred shares in the stock market kasi malaki yung disposable income nila. They are busy with their career, they are busy with their profession, so they don't really have time to study about entrepreneurship. So ang master plan nila is when they retire, yung passive income nila would come from the dividends of uh, preferred shares. So, may makilala ko, grabe, ang daming, ang daming niyang preferred shares sa Petron at saka sa PLDT. And, uh, sa ngayon, ha, siguro mga around close to, basta, <laughs> ayoko na sabihin, baka, baka magalit sa akin, senior ko. Uh, basta, ma- malaki-laki na rin yung, yung kinikita niya from the dividends itself on an annual basis. So, yung preferred shares, hindi yan, ano ah, monthly magnagbibigay ng dividend. Meron niyang schedule. Some preferred shares, they, they give their dividends twice a year, four times a year, minsan annually. Ang maganda sa, sa preferred shares, uh, regular yung dividends, but, of course, you have to still learn how to manage your money and uh, how to manage your cash flow. 
so that you will be able to make the most out of the dividends that you receive from the preferred shares. All right. So, ayun. Grabe. Daming nagtanong ngayon, no? So, maraming salamat ulit sa inyo. Uh, let me ask you again to, to please subscribe sa ating YouTube channel and then invite your friends to also subscribe so that we can finally reach yung ating goal of uh, having 1,000 subscribers sa ating YouTube channel. So, we are on the road to 1,000 subscribers. At pag na-reach natin, pag na natin yung 1,000 subscribers na yan, magpapapromo tayo dito sa 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 channel natin magpapa giveaway tayo maghahanap ako ng sponsor na pwede natin ipamigay na premyo uh, also uh, just a reminder eToro has a Chinese New Year promo uh, just go to bit.ly slash eToro CNY promo to uh, avail of the $50 bonus uh, if you open and invest uh, fund your account before on or before February 5 and Lastly, ayan, kung nag enjoy kayo makinig sa boses ko, <laughs> meron akong podcast. So, it's a relatively new podcast. I just started it two weeks ago. And a new episode will be coming out this coming Thursday. So, the podcast is entitled The 80%. So, it's really about behavior finance. Ayan. And uh, you can check out The 80%. Is, is, is search nyo lang yung The 80% na title ng podcast sa, sa Spotify or sa Apple, Apple Podcast and other podcast softwares that you uh, use. No? May, meron sa Google Podcast, meron sa Stitcher, uh, but a lot of people are subscribed sa Spotify. So, you can search for the title of the podcast which is The 80% and I hope you subscribe and uh, give it... Uh, Five stars sa rating sa Apple Podcast para mataas yung ating rating. So, again, uh, thank you for listening. I would have to say goodbye now. Um, thank you, DJ. Th- thank you, New Hampshire Jack. Yeah. So, have a great week uh, ahead, everyone. So, thank you for watching. Uh, please sub- like and subscribe. And also, you can visit my website at Ready to be rich at fitsvillafuerte.com So, have a great afternoon. Bye-bye. See you again next week. Baka Sabado ulit tayo. Saturday tayo. Uh, February 8. February 8 tayo. Magla-livestream next. Alright? So, bye-bye.